two, one, and we are recording. So welcome everybody to yet another edition. Of me, uh, I will help moderate uh, with me uh, right now. during the presentation or whatever the hell we're calling this uh, drop them in chat we'll find the right time to interrupt Scott uh, ask them and try to get those answers out to you as soon as we can depending and otherwise without further ado chat Oh, good afternoon. Uh, once again, this is Scott Richardson. Uh, and, uh, I'm going to up. Scott, tell Okay. Yeah, so I'm Scott Richardson. I guess uh, uh, you tuned in today I'm going to take apart to uh, I'm going to take apart this old Webley uh, Mark IV 38 S&W revolver uh, it's a surplus gun that I bought last year and I've never taken it completely down um, I've cleaned it uh, you know uh, sort of field stripped it and cleaned it but never taken it apart and uh, Ed's wanted me to do it for a while now so I figured I'd uh, get busy and, and kind of show you uh, all the guts of one of these things. Um, this is a uh, Webley 38 s and I don't know if this is going to show up on camera, but it says war finish right here. These were made for the British Army in World War II, and they're made off the same patterns as the original Webleys but they don't have the same level of bluing and polishing and, and refinement that a uh, commercial revolver would have. And, and uh, Webley and Scott was a little bit embarrassed. So they made sure that it said war finish. So you knew that their standards were a little bit higher. Um, it's kind of a fascinating old gun. Uh, they, these things, uh, if you'll notice, I, I have the chamber is empty. There's yeah, the camera is out of frame, so you uh, need to either yeah. up, up, there we go. So it's completely empty. I have no, no ammo in the gun or on the bench. Um, but you'll see on th all over this gun are um, proof marks where it was brought into the armory and, and they've, been, they've stamped it with uh, acceptance and proof marks even on the cylinder. I don't know if this is going to show up. Uh, let me see if I can get some light on there. But each cylinder has a stamp where each cylinder was tested, pressure tested. And then uh, it's also stamped with the gun serial number so that this cylinder matches that frame. Uh, it's kind of neat. And then as we go through this gun, I'm going to show you all the different places where they've, they've put the last two digits of the serial number on the part to match it to this gun because a lot of the stuff had to be hand fitted uh, to finish them, to get them working properly. So to field strip, we'll start with just field stripping. And uh, you know, that, that involves uh, just taking this cylinder off. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this screw right here. Now, it's a good time to tell everybody uh, if you're going to do things like this, invest in a good set of screwdrivers. Uh, I have this Wheeler set or a Weaver set with all of these hollow ground bits. And, uh, you know, these are specifically made for working on guns. And on these older guns, it's really easy to screw up these screws. Uh, there's a lot of screws on these old things. And the metallurgy on them, they weren't made out of case hardened metal, so it's easy to booger them up. So your best bet is to just get a wide variety of these, of these uh, screw tips and get the ones that fit the screw properly so you don't end up chewing up the slot in these, in these uh, old screws. So I'm gonna take this screw right here out. Oh wait, I'm gonna start with this one. If you'll notice it has a wide slot. I don't know if this is gonna show up on camera, but it has a really wide slot right there and it's meant it's really wide because it's meant to use a coin, you know, out in the field, a soldier would use a coin to take this screw out. 
uh, you, you know, in, in the event that they didn't have a screwdriver. I don't know if why you wouldn't have a screwdriver, but you'd have a coin, but that was the thought behind it. So we take this little screw out, set that aside, and then we flip this little lever out of our way. And this cylinder, let me get it to pop off, pops right off. So now you can clean this. Okay, and that might show the proof marks. I don't know if it's showing up on there, but you can see where the serial number is stamped. Yeah, it's uh, just a wee bit out of focus. Yeah, 1362. Yeah, I can see that there are marks, but not yeah, what Yeah, 136254 is the serial number of the gun. Hey, Scott. Yeah. When you're doing those, you may want to actually put it a little bit further away from you. It'll get into a little bit better focus. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can see it a little bit better that way. Yeah. So that's, you know, that pops the cylinder out. And then from here, you would, you know, run, a, you'd have access to the, to the uh, side of the uh, barrel and be able to clean it from the chamber side down, um, you know, and get in there and see it and clean it. Now from here, we're going to, we're going to continue on. That's, that's pretty much the scope of field stripping one of these, but we're going to take it a little bit farther and just go ahead and take this barrel completely off. And I'm going to remove this screw here. I'm just trying to do this and not bump the camera too much, but that's, I need a shorter screwdriver. So we'll take that screw out, set it aside. And flip the gun over. There's a smaller one on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. Okay. Get that. Yeah, these screws have a little bit of wear on them, so I'm trying to be careful and not put too much torque on them. So set that aside. Now there's a little, um, that's the little arm. We're gonna put that out. We're gonna have to punch this little hinge pin through. Yeah, can you pull it up into the camera? We can't see the hinge pin. Yeah, before. there's a little hinge pin right in here. And it kind of punches out. It's not under a lot of pressure, but we just need to give it a little tap to get it out. There we go. Wouldn't be a video with me if I didn't take a hammer to a gun. So there's the little pin right there. Set that aside. Now the barrel just slides right off. And there's your barrel assembly. Now from here, we can pull this piece off as well. I'm not gonna do it because I don't see any reason, but this little piece slides out and I don't know if it's showing up, but right here is 5-4. So this has been filed and matched to this gun and it's been stamped with the last two digits of the serial number. Um, and this is the little arm that pushes the cylinder up and ejects the shell. This is the little arm that does that. And it kind of sits up in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. But if you wanted to, you could really clean this barrel and service parts. There's not much else to come off except this piece right here. And that's the piece that kind of locks it. So from here, now we're gonna take apart the guts and the lock work out of this gun. And uh, I was cleaning this thing the other day and I discovered that the mainspring has an issue. So I've, I've ordered the mainspring and I will replace it, but uh, I'll show you the joy of these old guns here in just one second. So we're gonna take the grips off. Okay. And if you'll notice this mainspring is done for. See that gap right there? This is supposed to be one piece bent into a, a hairpin like shape. And this little arm is supposed to be attached right there. Doesn't stop the functioning of the gun. The gun shows you how durable these things were. It still works, you know, everything's working in double action, single action mode, but that spring is broken. So I've got to remove that and replace it. But we're gonna go ahead and pull all the lock work out of here and try to get this spring out and back together. So normally you would pinch it right here with a pair of pliers. And if you pull the hammer back, you've got that spring loaded and it's not gonna be a lot of fun to try to get that out of there. So we're gonna drop the hammer, squeeze this a little bit and try to get that spring out of there. Ah. 
This is fun. We're going to have bets on whether he gets it back in. I'm going to go with no. You're going no? Okay. All right. So normally that would come out as one piece, and that is what it would look like. We'll go ahead and set that aside. Let's pull the hammer out of this monster. Change my screw bit. And take this little screw out right here. Sorry about the camera. It's kind of right in the working area here. And be careful with these little screws because the threading on these things is very, very fine. And so if they don't go in or come out easily, take your time and be careful with them because it would be really easy to strip one of these. And you can see that there's only a few threads and they're very, very fine threaded. And, you know, I don't know where you would find another one of these, um, you know, it would be quite the search to try to locate that little screw. So from there, we can just lift our hammer straight out. Do a little jiggling, and there's our hammer. Okay, and if you'll notice, I don't know if this is showing up, there's a 5-4 right here. And you can see all of the file marks. You know, I think normally they would have polished this and smoothed it all out. Uh, but you can see all the tool marks on these parts where, where they just got them to fit and sent them out the door. Um, but that's, that's the hammer. And right here, this little, these little tips right here are where that mainspring attaches. It, it hooks just like that. And that's, what's, that's what the mainspring attaches to. So just to give you some idea. So we'll set the hammer aside. Now we can take out this little arm that just slides right out. Set that aside. Now we're gonna take our trigger. Oh, we gotta get our, our trigger guard off. Two little screws here on the bottom. Yeah, and I'm always really careful with these little screws because if I lost one or damaged one, I don't know where or how I'd go about getting a replacement. There are some parts available for these things. Numerich, uh, what they do is take old guns that uh, are beyond repair and then they strip them down for parts. And so every once in a while, they'll come across one of these and have individual screws and springs and things for them. But um, you can't always guarantee it. So I'm gonna grab the screwdriver and take this little screw out. And this will drop our trigger out of the way. Okay. Get out of there. Set that aside. And there's our trigger. And then this is the hand that comes off. And you'll notice here, I don't know if it's showing up, but 5-4 is stamped into the gun there. So this gun is, is obviously all original because all of these serial numbers match the last two digits of the serial number on the gun, which is kind of neat. Nobody's, this hasn't been re-arsenaled and, and uh, messed with. So we'll set that aside and you can see now there is a little spring under here, but to get it out, I'd have to drive out that roll pin and I really don't feel like doing that right now, but that drives out and there's a little flat spring under here as well. Um, but I'm not gonna do that. But you can see the guts are out of there, the lock works out. And now I can get in there and I can clean and oil and do what I need to do. This is also, this is your lock that locks the top of the gun down. And it's activated by another one of these flat springs. But judging how that main spring is broken, I'm not sure I wanna get in there and mess with another one of these flat springs right now. But to get it out, we would just remove that screw and then that screw comes through right here, this would lift off and then we would have to retension that spring to get it back on. But I'm not gonna play that game right now. I don't feel like breaking a spring on camera. And I'm not sure Ed wants to hear the words I would use if I did that. So now I'm gonna put some oil on some of these things and we're gonna put it back together. And Ed's uh, money is on me not getting it back together, correct? No, just, just the spring. Just the spring. The mainspring. Okay. You're not going to get that. You're not going to get that two-piece broken mainspring back in there. That's you don't think money. so? I. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your faith. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. Just... 
right. I'm gonna put we've actually, hey, Scott, we've actually got levels going here. We've okay. got 40, we've got not getting it back together until you get the new spring. Uh, we've okay. got uh, between <laughs> between now and the end of the of the video, and then ten minute increments. So okay, all right. And I think we're also adding a, a sub bet for how much cussing goes on between now and then. <laughs> well, the yeah. cussing in the cussing in my in my head is out of control, so uh, we're gonna put. Yeah, ahead. how much editing I'm gonna have to do after the video is right. on to keep it PG. So. So our trigger is gonna go back in here, and then this hand has got to come out of this little slot in the face. Uh, uh, up, 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 uh, yeah, left, left, there you go. Yeah, there's a slot right here. So we, when, when this trigger goes back in, it's gotta come out of that slot right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in and I'll show you just, just where it comes out. And I, this may not be that visible on screen because I have to kind of manipulate things a little bit. Get that arm back on there. Okay, let's see here, get that to drop in where I need it. This is kind of fun to try to do. Yeah, let's see here, get it in there. That lined up, not quite. Sorry for the, this is just not a, a fun task. I don't. They want to know if this is harder or easier than putting the Ruger back together. This is, uh, I think it's harder. And if you could bring it up a little bit in frame so we can watch yeah. you fail. Yeah. There we go. Oh, it's a little better. There we go. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Let's see if I can. I will get this, I promise, but it's just a little bit of a, oops, I'm going to come in from this side. Kind of a weird angle that you have to come at this thing to get it to go in there. Come on, there we go. It's dropped into place now. So I'll show you, uh, see how it's protruding, right? Yep, we can see it. Right there. So I wanna make sure it came out right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my spring realigned. Okay, grab the small screw. It goes right back in there. And this should drop most of the way through. Sometimes I'll use a punch to realign all the guts in there, but this one should just drop right through. There it goes. So take a little screwdriver and tighten that down. Okay. Here, clicking. So that's that's in place. So now we're going to put our hammer back. I got a little bit of oil on there just to coat it. That drops down. And what I like to do is I take this little arm that the mainspring attaches to right here, and I like to flip it up because that's the that's the orientation I need it in when I go to hook that mainspring that Ed thinks I'm not going to get in. That's that's where it's going to hook to. <laughs> So that drops down in here and I align it to this hole right here. And sometimes it's really helpful to have a tapered punch uh, to help align these things. And, you know, this is too big, but, um, you know, a tapered punch or something to put down in there and align these. I don't have one handy, but I'll use this. And then I'm going to take my other screw and this one drops straight through and tightens. And just thread it on the other side of the frame? Yeah, there's only a few threads on there, so you gotta be careful. But once again, take your time. And if it if it's difficult, uh, stop, back it out, investigate, figure out why. Okay, so our hammer's back in place. Now this little arm slides up, and I don't know how I'm gonna show you this, but there's a little slot right here. Uh, in the, I, honest to God, right there. Now we see it. Now we see it. No, good light. Yeah, got the headlamp on it. Um, so that that this slides in there, and then this little node corresponds to the notch right there. So we kind of drop it up in there, like so. 
you got to kind of fish around and I don't know how to describe what I'm doing there. So see now that's back in. So that's here. Ver that's vertical. That's not horizontal. That that arm is uh, is the thin side is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The thin side is is to the left side of the gun, yeah. and then you can see where it's notched for this this arm that I was Almost. referencing earlier. Um, we get that to come back down. This is where the mainspring attaches. Right there. Yeah, we can't quite see that. Oh no, there it is. Yep. Yep. So that's why I flipped that up out of my way was, you know, so that I wasn't trying to put this back in there and interfere with that. And then this is also where that mainspring is going to attach. So that's the bulk of, uh, that's the lock work. So now let's play the game of can Scott get the main, a two piece mainspring into a gun mm -hmm. that requires one, one piece. So I'm going to hook that on there. That's the first thing that needs to happen is that's well, that part might actually be easier if you hook that in separately. <laughs> yeah, normally you wouldn't. Well, these springs look like they're a lot beefier than they really are. So that's in place where it needs to be. Now we've got to get this piece. Uh, make sure I've got this oriented correctly. Which, which side broke off? That's the broken side. So now we've got to get that. Other way around. No? That way? Uh, the, yeah. Trying to see where it's yeah, it's got a little oh, that's it right there. All right, so we got to get that. It's got to go so in just there. Just for the viewers at home, this is not something you would be expected to do normally. When no, no. <laughs> if, if I think if you got into one of these things and saw this mainspring broken, that's time to um, order a new mainspring and move on. Um, but I'm going to try to bend this thing back in there. Ah, holy cow that's tight but i'll the spring. do the spring is <laughs> the spring. Uh, yeah and it's under a fair bit of tension where's your but, pliers at yeah let's we can try to squeeze that up in there and grab Good. both of we're almost there it's a very satisfying sounding click yeah, unfortunately, it's not the click we want. We're going to see you stab that into your thumb. Yeah, or send it off into uh, out of viewers. Let me see if I can. Hey, there we go. Holy shit, he did it. I did it. <laughs> All right, let me. And the crowd goes wild. This may be. <laughs> This may be gilding the lily a little bit, but we got to go <laughs> get that down flat, flush. Okay, so now let's test our gun. There it goes. Single, right, um, double you. action. Look at you. So, got our lock all work right. all back together. All right, let's put our trigger guard back on. All right, so whoever's collecting the money. Uh, <laughs> that only took like 30 seconds. Yeah, sorry. I would have fumbled with it more, but uh, get in here, get this one tightened. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily recommend anybody mess with the lock work on any of these old guns if you're not comfortable with it. Um, but they're not as complicated as you think. So now we're going to go ahead and put the, t the other end of the gun, the business end of the gun back together. And uh, I'm going to put a little bit of grease on here because this, this, uh, there's no bearings or anything. This pin slides, slides up in here, and this little spring is what is ejecting the shell. So that this little arm presses on that and ejects the shells out. So I'm going to put a little bit of grease on there because that's a kind of a big surface that gets a lot of. Um, metal to metal movement there. So I don't use much, just a tiny bit, just enough to coat it. I don't want to gum it up. And I also don't want to uh, create a real greasy surface that a lot of carbon can stick to. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back there. And then this will rotate there. So now that's operating freely. Okay, 
now we need to put this piece back in. And so this goes in that way. So kind of as I fat finger it. Let's see if I can get that. No, you're also covered in grease, so that's not Yeah, helping. true. Okay, let's get that in there. I wonder if maybe I should take that off first and then do it. Yeah, that was the answer. Okay, we'll put that back on last. That can go back on later. All right, so now I've got to put that, this pin back through there. And once again, this is usually where a, a punch or something is really handy to realign these pieces in there. Let's get that where I need it. That. And then you'll see, I don't know if this is going to come through, but there's a little protrusion right here. Hold it down towards the table. You might be able to see it. Yeah, right here. You'll see that it's round and then it yeah, has... No, yeah, no, yeah, we see it. Yeah, we see it. Yep. Okay, that, that corresponds to this notch in the frame. Just, Got so, it. just so you see where, it ends, where you need to end up with it. Sometimes this is easier to just close that. Get my punch. Gonna redo this Not where I need it. Uh, this is fun. Drop that in there. This is a. This isn't always fun to do, but it takes a little bit of finagling. Okay, there it is. Now I want to make sure that it drops back into that little notch. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a tap. Yeah, as I say, where's your hammer? Yeah, hey. Yeah. So I want to check it now and make sure that it's in there. Yeah, it's in the notch. Okay. So now this little arm goes back on there. This is your little, we'll put that on after we put the barrel on the, or the cylinder. So when you, you have two of these screws, the fatter one goes on this side. Um, so we're going to put our, yeah, we'll put that on there, put that on there. We'll screw this fatter one in. And I don't tighten these down gorilla tight. Uh, I just check them. Uh, usually when I when I shoot the gun, I'll take it out and I'll check these screws, make sure everything's tight. I don't want them to rattle out and lose one. Um, but I don't put Loctite on them. I don't, you know, I've never done it. I'm, I'm sure you probably could put a little blue Loctite on them and it wouldn't hurt anything. But sometimes that stuff's not fun to take back apart. And on old guns like this, um, just... I'm not convinced that it's a good idea, so I don't I don't use it. But your gun, do what you want. I'm not gonna. I wouldn't use red Loctite, period. But because you have to end up using heat to get rid of it, and sometimes uh, or to to break things loose, and heat on old heat treated guns is is uh, you'll you can uh, ruin the strength of them. So, all right. So now we put this back on. Slide that back in. Okay, get this. I want to move this out of my way to get that gap tightened. There we go. So now I can put this final screw back in. Okay, this is the one that we tighten and loosen with a coin. This is the one that the that they would use for field stripping. And I like to use this big fat screw screwdriver head because I feel like it does a better job than the coin. It's uh, maybe this isn't the one I use. I need I need one that fits in that slot. Got one over here. <laughs> My fingers are greasy though. I can't get it out of there. Okay, there we go. Give it a little twist. Okay, now we can put our grips back on. This one, this one. Just 
so and then please do not tighten this screw down really tight because it, this is Bakelite and uh, it will crack if you put too much pressure on it. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and put some, these are spent cases. There's no primer or projectile in them. They're spent. But I, I do not like draw, dry firing these old guns because yeah, you want to over travel the hammer and yeah, yeah. yeah. so you have you have this hammer spur right here and what's happening is when you dry fire it it's impacting the face of that and it will work harden this metal it'll get harder and harder and harder until it snaps off so uh if you can don't dry fire these things i mean if you're in the store and you're thinking about buying one it's not going to hurt it to dry fire at once to make sure that the uh, all the locking or the, the, you know, lock work is, is okay, but just don't get in the habit of sitting there dry firing it. Cause you have to drive this pin out and I'm sure there's probably a, a, a little bit of hand fitting involved to get that to work properly. So I just take a cup, you know, some of these old spent cases and I just shove them in there and it gives me a, a little something for the pin, to, the hammer spur to impact. Okay, so let's try double action. There we go, all back together. Huh. This is oh, the fun. Darned. This is the fun part. So it pop it it empties the shells for you, so you don't have to pull them out. So there it is. That's a Webley revolver taken apart and putting back together before your very eyes. Um, with a broken mainspring. With a broken mainspring. Reinstalled a broken mainspring. That's a new one. <laughs> All right. Anybody got any questions? Uh, there aren't that many folks here. so I Yeah, can I ahead. wanted to show a, a little difference here. I'm going to go ahead and make this safe and get it off my bench real quick for just one second. And because uh, I have live ammo now and I don't want the gun right here. This is a 38 s and w round. You can see how short it is, and that's a 38 special, just to give you some idea of um, the caliber and what, you know, this is a 200 grain slug versus 158 grain, which is a fairly common slug size for a 38 special. So the diameter, this is a little fatter and a little heavier than a 38 special, uh, but with far less powder. This is running uh, a two grains of tight group powder. This would be running probably twice as much. I don't know, I'd have to look at my book, but uh, so it gives you some idea. This is a pretty weak, uh, low powered cartridge. Uh, it's a fairly beefy gun for a, an old break top revolver. It's, it's a little sturdier than the uh, Smith & Wessons of the same period, the break top Smith & Wessons, but I still wouldn't want to, I, I, I really download these when I hand load them. And uh, you can almost see the round hitting, you know, <laughs> traveling through the air because I just don't want to put a bunch of stress on that gun. Well, especially now that it's got a busted mainspring. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not using it for home defense or personal defense. So there's no real reason to, you know, run full power loads through it. But anyway. So, Mark, uh, Mark has uh, observed that they probably manufactured sewing machines in the same factory as this pistol. Probably. Because it's fiddly. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can see how rough the finish on it is, uh, which I think gives it a certain charm. You know, being a, a knowing that it's a a real Milserp gun. You know, and it's it was just Mils. You know, uh, just purposely built. You know, purpose built and thrown out in the field and uh, did its job. But it's Bob is your not, uncle. Yeah, and certainly not pretty, but very effective. It 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 still works to this day. Well, I think it's gorgeous, and I thank you for sharing it with us. So, uh, well yeah. done once again. Yeah. Uh, if there aren't any other questions, which I don't imagine there are too many Webley owners out there in the audience, audience, so they were just probably looking to see a cool thing get taken apart and not yeah. put back together again, and you've really disappointed them there. Yeah, I'm you sorry. To get, you managed to get it back together. Well, the old uh, bigger Webleys, the 45 caliber Webleys, are virtually the same gun. Um, they come apart the same way. That's where I learned uh, how to do it. And so when I looked at this one, and I thought, well, it's, th th this work is a little bit different on the 38, but it's really the same idea as the bigger Webleys. So, um, you know, if you can do one, you can do the other. Wonderful. 
Well, on that, uh, it's it's the I'm not going to repeat that, Nigel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, was I insulted in uh, the British? No, no, no. But Nigel's being very British. Uh, no. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, on that on that note, uh, thanks everybody for showing up. Uh, if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. We can obviously ask more questions after the video is done, and uh, we'll see everybody in the pub as uh, as it happens. So all um, right, well, one and we are. Oh, you want to say thank you before? I yeah, say I just want to say thanks everybody for showing up. This stuff's a lot of fun, and and I uh, really appreciate you guys sitting here and uh, watching me be do boring things. And next week. We'll we'll have it. Uh, we'll we'll give you more than a day's notice, folks. That was my. We'll have point. a we'll have a topic. <laughs> we'll have a topic, and we'll we'll put it out earlier, and Eric will Eric will help us uh, <laughs> publish it, and everything will be better next yeah. week. So, thanks again, everybody, and right. I'm killing I'm killing the video right now.